Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Astrobytes, featuring their review of the American astrological chart. I am Sylvia Garsensweig. I am here in conversation with guest speaker Brian Francis Culkin, who is a prolific writer, movie director, and astrology researcher. Hey, Brian, and thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Me too. Brian, some of our listeners might be asking themselves, how could a country possibly have an astrological birth chart? Can you share with us? Sure. No, that's a that's a very good question. And I think it's a common question, too, because, you know, usually when we think of astrology, we associate it with a a human being, right? It's when a, a baby is born and there's a relationship between the, the planet and their position on the ecliptic and their mathematical relationship between themselves. And that produces an astrology chart. Um, and when we try to attach astrology to larger symbolic entities uh, beyond just a simple human body or a human organism or, or a biological organism, then there are some questions. And, you know, I, I think it's um, what astrology can tell us is that it's, you know, um, the way things work, it's, it's beyond a, or the way identity works is beyond a simple libertarian idea that only individuals exist, right? And um, uh, Slavo Žižek is a contemporary philosopher and psychoanalyst. He has a wonderful line in one of his books and he, what he says is that the symbolic order has a motion of its own. And what that basically means is that beyond, above and beyond individual human life, individual biological life, um, language and abstract formations and, and symbolic composites, they have an existence of their own as well. It's a, certainly it's not biological in the sense that they have heartbeats and you know, they, they have respiration and, 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 and all of the organic processes that are associated with biology. But the idea is that the, the, the universe that we're part of, the, the symbolic universe and the symbolic texture that we live in has its own life. It, it, it has its own movement. And something like a country, which certainly isn't a, an individual in the biological sense, but it, it has its own symbolic reality. And these realities, when you're dealing with a country or a business or any other type of symbolic composite, when that is, when it is birthed and when it is given a certain date with some kind of registration, like, the, for instance, the United States of America, July 4, 1776, the day that our independence was declared from England, that demarcates, you know, the, the, the inception of a birth chart in the same way when a child is born and comes out of his mother or, or her mother, um, that indicates the inception of a birth chart for an individual. So it's, 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 it is a little bit tricky because we have to think in a more abstract way and we have to think beyond simply the existence of human beings. But it's just the idea that we live in a rich symbolic universe that, and that things beyond simply you know, organisms with heartbeats have an existence of their own, albeit it's a little bit different. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I know when two people come together and with love and they kiss for the first time, a, new ch a chart is being cast, can be, can be cast at that moment. And the, the chart of the relationship sure. uh, is actually reflecting the the karma or the momentum of that of that of those two people coming together so what what really happened at the moment the country's birth chart was cast that's that's an interesting question because that's also a historical question independent of an astrological question you know one of the things that's very interesting about contemporary american life and contemporary american culture is that this idea of a nation is much more, um, it's, it's very different, let's say, in 2021 than it was. In, I mean, it's extraordinarily different from 2021 to 1776. I mean, it's extraordinarily different from 1920 or 1880. Um, and that, I think, is due to the effect of 
technology first and foremost is the fact that you know uh, a small town in Arizona and a small town in northern Maine can both be on the same smartphone or both be watching the same television program or both be um, you know listening to the radio whatever there's a technology has a homogenizing effect on upon culture and that is certainly the case with America because when you think before you know the, the the 150 or so years prior, to 1776 during the colonial development of America. I mean, my God, these, these, these 13 colonies were so unbelievably different. You know, the case with Massachusetts was a, which was really a, a pseudo religious colony it was founded by kind of hardcore, um, you know, Puritans and pilgrims who had this kind of bizarre, somewhat bizarre interpretation of, of, of Calvinistic and, and Lutheran theology. And, you know, a place like Rhode Island, which was, founded as a revolution for Massachusetts with someone like Roger Williams and who was the founder of the Rhode Island colony. And then New York was always a business colony. It was, you know, it's, it's really no surprise at all when you think of why a place like Wall Street and, you know, New York City is the financial capital of really the world, certainly America. It's because New York was always a trading colony from its, 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 its very beginning. And, you know, a place like Virginia or Georgia, which was a debtor's colony or Maryland, which had a big Catholic population. It, 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 it was, what I'm trying to say is that prior to 1776, prior to the American Revolution, America was a unbelievably diverse, um, you know, all 13 colonies had very different cultures, very different histories, very different leadership. And then when you get to the American Revolution, which was, which started really, you know, it, it had been building for a while with a lot of the events that were happening, particularly in Boston. Uh, with the Boston Massacre in 1770 and the Boston Tea Party and just 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 the various kind of uh, rebellions that that was happening in the city. But it it kicked off on April 19, 1775, with the Battle of Lexington Concord. And then you had, you know, let's say in um, r r right after that, in, in May, you had the sacking of Fort uh, the sacking of Fort Ticonderoga by Benedict Arnold. And then you had the Battle, Battle of Bunker Hill in June of 1776, uh, excuse me, June of 1775. And then, you know, you get the meeting of the first Continental Congress in Philadelphia in early 1776. And they hire a young attorney, a, a young, really a young aristocrat, a, a kind of a Virginian uh, aristocrat named Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence. And, and when the declaration was unveiled on July 4th, 1776, which is the date that we use for the astrology chart. It was a, it was a, it was first and foremost, a declaration of, of course, independence from British colonial rule. But what it also was, was a compromise between these 13 colonies that really had not been connected before. Like there was no American, there was no real American consciousness in the way that we think of ourselves as Americans, there were 13 independent, really almost nations, like 13 in independent states. And the, the unveiling or the, dec or the unveiling of this Declaration of Independence was that moment of unification of some kind of elementary national consciousness, where, where this kind of American consciousness was formalized in the form of a text. So that's, you know, there, I was an American history major in college, so there's a lot more I could say about the history of, of, uh, of, of America. But that's the basic idea. It's just that when, when Jefferson was appointed and wrote this statement of unification, this statement of independence, it, it marks not only the astrology chart, but the inception of America as a symbolic composite of 13 different, rat, very, very different colonies. So that's that's what I would say about that. Yeah, well, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's so clear. And I'm thinking about that moon in Aquarius that the SL, the um, the U.S. chart has. What are the defining p features of the American chart that you can share with us? Well, I, I think what you just mentioned is a, a definitive feature of the American chart because on you know on July 4, seventeen seventy six, the moon was in Aquarius, and. You know, Aquarius, you know, it's it's interesting when you think of the moon and its position, the two weakest positions for the moon are Capricorn and Scorpio. That's where the moon is 
kind of most pathological. But, you know, Saturn rules Aquarius and, you know, like it rules Capricorn. So when you, when you put the moon in Aquarius, in, in my experience, it has a bit of a difficult time. However, it's very good at intellectualizing organic life, abstracting emotional life. And I think when you look at something like the Declaration of Independence and what was happening in July of 1776 and this kind of this kind of push towards independence, this push towards freedom, and then you see the his, history of America, how these concepts of personal liberty and freedom in like a very abstract way, this is signified by the position of the moon in Aquarius because the moon in Aquarius is a position that wants – freedom but it's 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 in a very abstract way it, it doesn't have that kind of a cellular organic life that you would get with the moon in taurus or the moon in cancer um and the other thing i i think is very important to note about the moon in aquarius is that yes it's unbelievably abstract and when you think of the you know the opening lines of the declaration those beautiful lines of the declaration of independence you know all men are created equal so on and so forth but it's like well wait a second who's missing from that well, let's see who's missing from that. Black people, indigenous people, women. I mean, like, there, there's this, like, so this is, like, a very classic, in my opinion, Aquarian move motion in the sense that it dictates this kind of pure formal freedom that's absent particular qualities, that's absent uh, concrete, uh, like a concrete knowledge or, like, some kind of organic knowledge. And again... The moon is in conjunct with Mercury in the in, in the American chart. The, the the Mercury is very strong in the seventh house in Cancer, and it's in conjunct to the to the um, to the uh, to the lunar position in Aquarius. And you know, whenever two planets are in conjunct, it gives a kind of tension in which it's not resolvable. And I think that speaks to this this idea because you know. America has several planets. It has four planets in, in uh, Cancer. So it, mm -hmm. in one sense, it speaks to this idea of like home and land and, you know, having, you know, and this is like the white picket fence of the American dream or like the, or like the Yemen farmer in, in Jeffersonian ideology. Mm -hmm. But there, there's a conflict between who is free and what is free and what can, and what can be free that shows up in that relationship between Mercury and the moon in the American chart. Yes, there's a high nationalism with that, with all those planets in, in Cancer and the moon in, in Aquarius. Yeah, I follow. I, I'm following you. Yeah, right on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What else? I, yes. I, I think another, and this, oh, no, I was going to say, I, I think another, and this I would say is maybe the most maybe the strongest part of the American chart is that beautiful Saturn and Libra way up at the top in the 10th house. I mean, that speaks to, again, you know, it's, it's not like America is perfect. There's all these historical problems with America, but I, I think the idea of this three system of government, the legislative, the judicial and the executive, I mean, that, that is undoubtedly an achievement when you think of the history of governmentality and, you know, human history, there is something, you know, people today, it's very fashionable to complain about America and talk about how bad it is. But there's a lot of things that are very wonderful about America. And I think that, you know, the system of government that America theorized for as imperfect as it has been in terms of how certain groups of people or marginalized, marginalized people have been affected, there is something quite beautiful about the way the American system is set up. And I think that's reflected in that in that very strong position. You know, because Saturn and Libra is very, very strong. It's yes, that exalted. absolute power of that. Yes, exalted. And also in the mm -hmm. it's exalted. Yeah, it's exalted in Libra. Uh -huh. yeah. And then it's also very and then it's also very strong up, up in the tenth house. Mm -hmm. So that that position gives this kind of this kind of uh, elegance or kind of um you know dignity. This almost, yeah, the dignity uh, there. Uh, aristocratic sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dignity of, of the American l l legislative judicial and executive system and you know something like the bill of rights you know enumerating these these 10 uh, absolute rights that the citizens of of, of america are um are are given mm -hmm. yeah i can see that yeah so what what is your take of uh, what's happening at this moment in turn in terms of current transits 
uh, to the chart, to the natal chart of America. 